Hello, I'm Marie Uressa. I'm with Rappler in the Philippines. I'm so sorry I couldn't be with you today in person, but we're holding our own World Press Freedom Day in Manila and in the Philippines. Um, critical for us at this moment in time, just a few days before our May 13th elections. Thanks for asking me to speak to you today about the importance uh, of our mission and what happens when disinformation makes elections, makes the vote, uh, puts it all at risk. Uh, I don't think that we've lived through a moment like this, which once again proves that information is power. What we've seen is that technology has acted as an accelerant. Um, for the first time in a, in a very long time, technology has actually um, made people doubt what the facts are. The way it's been set up, social media platforms, the way uh, it's been weaponized, the way information operations have worked all around the world, um, facts are disputed. That impacts whether or not, if you don't have facts, then how can you have truth? And if you don't have truth, then what happens to trust, right? So all of a sudden, news groups, journalists all around the world are having to fight to retain the belief of the communities we once served. This is a reality we have to deal with. Here in the Philippines, the attacks against me and Rappler began with exponential attacks on social media. A lie told a million times becomes the truth, and I know that firsthand. Uh, I'm not a criminal. I'm just a journalist. I'm a reporter. I've been that my entire life. And yet, when you hear on social media the word criminal a million times, and then you actually augment that when the most powerful voice in the land, in, the case, in our case, it's President Duterte, when he then says that Rappler and Maria Ressa, they're criminals, that compounds and prep, it essentially crushes us in between bottom-up exponential attacks and top-down attacks, the weaponization of social media and the weaponization of the law. In 14 months, the Philippine government has filed 11 cases against Rappler. I've posted bail eight times. In a five-week period, I've been arrested twice and detained once. We're still here. You're seeing behind you Rappler. We're doing our jobs and getting ready to ferret out the facts so that our people, when they go to the polls on May 13th, can help make the wise choice. Um, there's so much at stake today, right? Because this isn't just happening in the Philippines. Cheap armies on social media, the first report about that came out in November of 2017 when Freedom House said that in 27 countries around the world, cheap armies on social media were just rolling back democracy. A year later, just a year later, the Oxford Computational Propaganda Project brought that number of countries to nearly double the amount. Um, from the Philippines to the United States, the information operations make us doubt the facts. And if you don't have the facts, your democracy is automatically weaker. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, we certainly can't give up. I think what we've learned in Rappler is that now more than ever, the mission, the reason why we became journalists in the pla first place, that mission is more important to our societies than ever. We are in an active battle to preserve our democracy. Democracies live in a public sphere where we all have to agree on the facts. Um, this weaponization of social media actually uses free speech to incite hate against perceived enemies or critics of the state and stifle them, pound them to silence. Don't let it happen. We have to keep fighting back. Um, so, as you begin the, the celebrations for World Press Freedom Day, all of us around the world are coming together, journalists, under attack. And I think these, this is what you'll see in almost every study that's there. Most recently, RSF came out, Reporter Sans Frontiers came out with the World Press Freedom Index. And you can see yet again, the Philippines has dropped again. You can see yet again, last year they talked about how fear and hatred was used against journalists. This year, it's getting worse. What are we gonna look at? Well, the tech 
platforms have, be have become our partners in many instances. We need to def demand accountability uh, to end the impunity of these information operations on social media. That's starting to happen in many parts of the world. Um, and then the other part that I wish and I hope for, and we started this, UNESCO actually began this last year at the World Press Freedom Day celebrations. News groups and journalists all around the world have to come together. We push aside in every country competition and collaborate together to protect the facts, to come together, work with social media platforms, demand not just accountability, but that, that they protect the facts, that they take the role of gatekeeper seriously. In the meantime, we just hold the line. It's something we know well at Rappler. We've survived this far. If we could do it, you could do it. Um, there's no better time to be a journalist than now. We need to make sure that our democracies are not just democracies in name alone, but that the true substance, the true soul of democracy, which is debate based on facts, that that continues to live on. I wish you a wonderful few days together um, as we celebrate World Press Freedom Day around the world. I'm Maria Ressa from all of us here at Rappler. Thanks. See you soon.